There is a place known worldwide for its diverse landscapes, unique ecosystems, and natural resources. A place offering unmatched recreational, agricultural, and economic opportunities. To sustain these many natural treasures, there is a single key element that must be preserved, managed, and respectfully guided to promote sustainable growth and provide future generations with the prosperity that nature has intended. This place is Utah, and healthy watersheds are its foundation. A watershed is more than just a spot where water converges. It's the lifeblood of the landscape, sustaining the animals and people who depend upon it. Keeping our watersheds healthy is vital. Restoration projects maintain water quality and yield while enhancing the overall health and sustainability of important areas. A healthy watershed reaches much further into our lives than many understand. The Utah Watershed Restoration Initiative, known as WRI, is a partnership-based program in Utah to improve high-priority watersheds throughout the state. There are many challenges we must face, including the reduction of invasive plant species, limiting destructive fires, reversing aspen forest decline, and restoring degraded streams. Understanding natural processes while managing and restoring these watersheds is vital and it's a challenge that we all must accept to preserve our resources for future generations. The consequence of doing nothing is invasive species like cheatgrass, pinyon, juniper, cover the face of the land, and the result of that is catastrophic fires, watersheds that yield no water, they produce no forage for wildlife or forage for livestock, they become lands that are, are, are sick, that don't produce the way nature intended them to produce. The partners in WRI were able to conduct a broad reach of work that rejuvenates damaged watersheds and effectively promotes positive changes to reduce future problems. The cornerstone of these solutions relying on the rehabilitation of landscapes through removal of invasive plant species, native and constructive reseeding, preemptive wildfire prevention, reintroducing fire where it belongs, and stream and riparian restoration initiatives. One of the unique problems WRI faces is aggressive conifer growth. Two plant species in particular, pinyon pine and Utah juniper, reproduce at an incredible rate and cover vast amounts of land. The expansive root systems of these conifers absorb large amounts of water, displacing the grasses, flowering plants, and shrubs native to the area. If left untreated, these plants can degrade wildlife habitat and livestock forage to the point where they are unusable. It's a problem that has repercussions for mule deer, sage grouse, and many other species. With a decrease in habitat quality, population numbers of these species can decline, leading to diminished and sometimes dangerously low population numbers in untreated regions. Well, first of all, you can't have more wildlife unless you have more habitat and we have to a lot of our habitat's been degraded over the years for a lot of reasons and when we improve habitat and improve the carrying capacity of the range then we see increased numbers in our herds whether it's deer uh, elk antelope sheep moose whatever they all need good healthy habitat really in focus right now is the importance of this area for sage grouse we're doing everything we can to avoid the listing of sage grouse so really this, um, this issue is front and center for BLM. We're documenting sage grouse moving into habitat that we have created for them. We have scientific proof they are moving into the areas that we have created for them. The WRI partners rejuvenate damaged watersheds and promote positive changes to reduce future problems. The cornerstone of these solutions relies on certain types of projects. The bullhog technique utilizes a track hoe or front-end loader fitted with a heavy-duty grinder that can effectively and quickly remove large areas of pinyon pine and juniper. By grinding to the stumps, this process prevents regrowth while the chips and remains of this process aid in native plants and sagebrush growth after treatment. The chaining process utilizes a very heavy steel chain attached to two bulldozers. As the bulldozers drive side by side, the pinions and junipers are uprooted and pulled out of the ground to prevent growth and spread. Seed can be flown in on or before treatment so the soil disturbed by the chain helps cover the seed. 
The lop and scatter method utilizes a group of workers with chainsaws who strategically down the pinion and juniper at the base to prevent regrowth. The remnants are cut into smaller pieces and spread to promote growth of native plants and sagebrush. Lop and scatter is used on earlier stages of conifer encroachment and usually does not require seeding. WRI plays a critical role in stream restoration by providing a framework for collaboration among the partners uh, so that our restoration projects are larger in scale, uh, that we're able to do more with, with the dollar. Trout Unlimited believes that the WRI is instrumental in supporting and, and improving and restoring our watersheds and streams. Stream and riparian restoration is another important part of WRI. Invasive plant life, effects of wildfires and undesirable erosion can affect flow or even permanently halt a stream system. This can lead to low water quality and yield, fish and wildlife habitat destruction, as well as irreparable changes to the overall watershed itself. WRI projects restore natural processes to streams and the surrounding riparian areas. Wildfires can have a devastating impact on Utah's watersheds. Wildland areas negatively impacted by fire are a top WRI priority. If rehabilitation efforts are not aggressively pursued soon after a fire, the watershed will quickly become unhealthy. Invasive plants, like cheatgrass, will dominate the landscape and contribute to increased sedimentation downstream. Wildfire rehabilitation can diminish the short-term impact and long-term effects that fires can have on watersheds. Fires are actually very beneficial if they're done as nature would intend them. But where we've artificially built up fuel loads, where we've artificially allowed uh, uh, beetle kill timber to accumulate, where we've allowed invasive species, uh, weeds and plants to build up, then the fires burn unusually hot and they sterilize the landscape. And if we're not going to have fires, then we need to go in and do the work that fires would have done. When we take out pinion and juniper, we do it in a mosaic pattern. We don't take them all out, we try to emulate what a fire would do. Aspen forests are known for their unique beauty and are an iconic part of Utah's natural treasures. However, if not managed correctly, aspen forests will be outcompeted and eliminated by aggressive conifer growth. Through the proper management and rehabilitation strategies, WRI works to preserve these areas and prevent the loss of aspen forests across the state. Today, WRI is approaching 1.5 million acres of watersheds treated. Partners and agencies working together with the understanding that rangeland ecosystems are dynamic and that the processes they are engaged in are not only necessary, but vital to the future of our state's natural resources. The whole idea here is to, to bring together, uh, whether it's private land, state land, federal land, uh, bring those partners together on the landscape and really be able to, to tackle a resource problem on a broad scale instead of trying to piecemeal it, uh, you know, one parcel at a time, the feds working on their land, state on their land, private on their land, uh, is really to bring those three groups together uh, and do projects collaboratively uh, to, to really get uh, to get problems solved. Through the partnerships and through the Watershed Restoration Initiative, we're now able to implement these restoration projects, both proactive and reactive projects, uh, at a scale that we couldn't comprehend doing the map before. It's an exponential increase over before we had the Watershed Restoration Initiative in place. Wildlife use the landscape regardless of, of who owns it. So that's the beauty of the Watershed Restoration Initiative is through the authorities that we bring to the table in this partnership, we're able to look more holistically at the landscape and restore where restoration needs to be. This initiative is wildly successful. We have nearly all of our neighbors in the Western states coming to us and saying, can you show us how you're accomplishing what you're doing? Because the results have been so dramatic and so documentable. The, the synergism of this partnership is putting everyone's resources and money and talents where they need to be to get the, all these projects done. This is one of the most important wildlife habitat restoration projects in the whole country. Nobody else is doing what's what is being done here in the state of Utah. If we, if we didn't have 
WRI, BLM would be faced with doing its re restoration work, going it alone. And that, in my view, would be just really detrimental. If support stopped for the Watershed Restoration Initiative, it would be a catastrophic blow to natural resource management in Utah. This is a, a proven product that is, is showing benefits that outweigh the cost. And uh, it would be a horrible mistake to cut back on the, uh, the funds that are being dedicated to this initiative. Utah's Watershed Restoration Initiative is vital to the ongoing management and protection of our natural resources. Your support for Utah's WRI helps us maintain Utah for future generations. WRI offers opportunities for long-term and sustainable uses of Utah's natural resources, which is something we all need to stand behind. <laughs>